Well, for more insights into the impact 9-11 has had on pop culture here in the U.S., let's bring in Robert Thompson. He's the founding director of the Blair Center for Television and Popular Culture at Syracuse University. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So I first want to have you take us back to what September 11th was like for you personally. Well, I was getting ready to go to work, and uh, back then, the way you heard about things is you generally watch television. My neighbor called me, told me to turn on the uh, uh, TV. I turned on cable news, uh, it, probably 10 minutes into what had happened, uh, and then I drove into work. One of the towers came down while I was listening to it on the radio. By the time I got up to my office, uh, the other tower had uh, come down. It was, what, 102 minutes from the first plane hitting to the second tower going down. And uh, as you mentioned, this, of course, was before things like smartphones were mainstream and years before social media platforms and, and Facebook and other uh, platforms were widely used. How did you get news then compared to now? Well, it's true. I mean, back then, generally, when something was happening, uh, and this, it's only 20 years ago, but it was common that people would call you and say, turn on your television set or uh, uh, turn on the radio. Uh, the way we experienced 9-11 was not that much different than the way we experienced the assassination of President John F. Kennedy back in 1963. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, people are instantly given, uh, you know, their, their phone makes a noise, they get updates uh, uh, constantly from places selected especially for them. Uh, things are much more instantaneous. All that stuff was there. The Internet was there, cell phones were there, but they hadn't really coagulated into the sort of massive instantaneous communication system which we all experience and totally take for granted today. And you certainly raise an interesting point when you think of things like algorithms that really divert the sort of news and the sort of content that we see. So would you say then tech is the most dramatic change in the past 20 years because of this? And what kinds of tech were most impacted by 9-11? Well, I'm not sure the tech was impacted by 9-11. The, the tech was already there and it was already developing and it was already penetrating uh, the culture uh, in a lot of ways. Certainly, we experience things differently since 9-11, because 20 years of that technology uh, uh, has included. I suppose there is more tech used for, uh, you know, homeland security types of things, more uh, mechanisms developed for information gathering and all that. But the technological revolution, the digital revolution, was really already happening. Uh, uh, when September 11th uh, occurred. And as you mentioned, this, this need for information, it existed, but it certainly felt like it was amplified since 9-11. Talk about the, how that need for information during and after the attacks has now played into things like the 24-hour cable news cycle that we've now all come to know, both on our phones and on TV. Right. Well, we had 24-hour cable uh, news in the United States starting in, what was it, June of 1980. CNN uh, launched. So CNN had been on for over two decades by the time uh, uh, September 11th, 2001 came along. And in fact, uh, the other two 24-hour channels, Fox News and MSNBC, had been around for five or six uh, years as well. So we already had that sense of when breaking news was happening, you had places that were covering it wall to wall and, and that were easy to access, maybe not in the palm of your hand, but certainly wherever you could find a television set. I do think, however, we were still in that era, though, of uh, consensus culture. There were places that everybody was watching uh, pretty much the same thing at the same time. For example, after September 11th, there was a period, very brief, but there was a period when everybody kind of came together. Uh, there was a sense that we were all in this uh, together. I think if those events of 20 years ago had happened in the current technological climate, with all of the completely fragmented audiences, people getting information from different sources, the ability for conspiracies to instantaneously uh, get all kinds of traction, the ability for false information to get instant traction. I think the response we would have had to September 11th, if it happened today, would be very, very different than it was 20 years ago. That's certainly very true. Now, we know that the 9-11 attacks, they influenced all aspects of life from security, privacy, immigration, and fundamentally our ability to really trust each other. So talk about some of the immediate notable changes to pop culture. 
Well, for pop culture, the immediate change was it went on a macabre sort of holiday for a couple of days. Sporting events were canceled. Broadway shows were canceled. Uh, television was not playing any of their regularly scheduled things. And not just the news channels, even all of the entertainment channels were, were playing uh, uh, interrupted, uh, interrupted programming, were playing the same news. Uh, some channels just put up a card saying, due to the events of, uh, uh, of today, uh, we've suspended our, our programming. So instantaneously, popular culture pretty much stopped. That began to change relatively quickly. The late night comedians got back uh, within a week. CBS came back with their late night shows the following Monday, September 11th that year, had been on a Tuesday. But they tread very carefully. They didn't go right into telling their usual jokes. They started almost paying a coverage char cover charge at the beginning of each episode uh, in the beginning uh, by being very serious and doing these very serious kinds of uh, monologues. And in those early days when things came back, we had uh, the openings of shows that used to show the, uh, uh, the two towers of the World Trade Center, that was taken away, the idea that that would be too traumatic. But, you know, that didn't last very long. Uh, pop culture got back to normal fairly quickly. Those predictions that we were going to become a kinder and gentler nation, the ridiculous prediction that irony was going to be dead after this, that we were no longer going to see big explosions in movies anymore. That turned out, and we should have known it would turn out, uh, completely wrong. Within uh, six months, uh, by the six-month anniversary of 9-11, CBS played that movie by those uh, French filmmakers, the only uh, um, uh, people who caught the first plane right. uh, on camera hitting the building. But we also had a lot of The Osbournes, a completely goofy reality show, celebrity boxing, which had boxing matches between B- and C-level uh, uh, celebrities, uh, Paula Jones and Tanya Harding uh, uh, boxed. Within six months, uh, American television and popular culture had pretty much gotten back to normal. Live, life in an airport was very different. Right. Politics right. was very different. Lots of things had changed. But all of those predictions that the way we entertain ourselves uh, would change did not turn out to be the case. Indeed. Well, thank you so much for your insights. Robert Thompson there, founding director of the Blair Center for Television and Popular Culture at Syracuse University. Thank you.